Well, it, it, the, the ocean naturally is slightly alkaline. And um, as you dissolve more carbon dioxide in it, it makes it more acidic because carbon dioxide dissolving in water gives you carbonic acid. And so there's the, the water goes from being alkaline to acidic. And the, the, the trouble is that a lot of creatures who live in the ocean have shells and the shells are made of calcium carbonate. So that they range from big creatures with shells and nautilus and, and big, big, big shelled animals to tiny microscopic creatures like foraminifera, which are the tiny, tiny animals which uh, sort of rain down towards the seabed as they die. So you've got a, this huge rain of, of shells of dead foraminifera falling down towards the seabed and the carbon dioxide, the carbon that's in them, because they're carbonates, um, is then fortunately lost to the climate system. They, they form a kind of ooze on the ocean bed. You never see them again for a few million years. So it's the, the ultimate way the planet has got of getting rid of carbon. And it's the, about the only way of really getting rid of carbon so you never see it again. But the trouble is, as you make the oceans more acidic, those shells redissolve on the way down because if you put, uh, you know, at school, if you put <laughs> chalk and acid together, it goes kapow. And so the, the, the carbonates in, in the, in the um, calcium carbonate in the shells redissolves. And they, first of all, the living animals lose their shells, which means they become extinct because they can't live. And the dead animals also lose their shells in that their shells never reach the ocean bed, but they redissolve. So in all those ways, is if the ocean gets to be too acid, it could really destroy the marine ecosystem because you're you're and also destroy the ocean's ability to be a sink for carbon dioxide. If the cap if the cap isn't there anymore, um then the, the methane can come out whenever it, it wants, really. The, um, the, the, the methane hydrates disintegrate and the methane comes out as a gas. So it, it can, in theory, come out in the winter as well as the summer. Um, it will work its way between the ice flows in the winter. So it, it just adds to the amount of time that will be subjected to methane bombardment. Well, um, frac fracking, um, I don't know what it's... It, it, it does result in methane emissions, but it's very hard to get any figures for how much that is because the people who do the fracking don't want that to be publicised. So it's not clear what contribution fracking makes to m total global methane. Weirdly enough... Um, a solution for the seabed methane in on the Russian Arctic shelves has been proposed based on fracking. That is to say, you you have a bunch of offshore wells and you drill down uh, to some fairly shallow depth, then you drill sideways and open up cavities. Just you just do exactly what you do in fracking, but in this case you're getting at the methane and you 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 pump it out. Um, or, or burn it. So the, the the only ideas that anybody has had to to stop this methane outbreak involve doing things similar to fracking, uh, in which case we would be, I guess, dependent on the oil industry to apply their expertise. The economic cost of the what would happen if there were a methane outbreak has been estimated as $60 trillion over a century. And that's if uh, you have 50 gigatons of methane coming out, which is about 10% of the, the, the methane in, in the sediments of the East Siberian Sea. If that comes out in, in a two or three years, then it will produce, uh, the impact will be such that the total economic costs will be $60 trillion. But that $60 trillion turns out to be about 15% of the, 
of what uh, the total cost of global warming is to the planet. Um, so you you take that 60 is 15, then then that's four, that's about 400 million dollars. Uh, 400 trillion dollars is the total cost of global warming to the planet. It, it, it's hard to it's, it's a hard number to work out because uh, you could say, well, that's what it costs, but that's because we're economically successful and we wouldn't be if we weren't producing any carbon dioxide. Uh, but that's that's the figure, and 15% of that is would be Arctic methane, um, if it happened. Well, uh, all the risks that are associated with carbon dioxide emissions, uh, it's not that they're gradual, but they're more gradual than a methane pulse would be. So we, they're, they're, they're rapid enough that we ought to be taking them very seriously in doing something, which we're not. But it will take, say, a decade or two decades for s adding more CO2 to cause some major changes in, in climate. But if methane is released suddenly, then the result is sudden and the warming is sudden as well. Um, it doesn't take any time at all for the, the methane to immediately impact the, the amount of radiation absorbed. So, um, so when I call it the greatest immediate threat, that's because it's the greatest threat whose results will be very sudden, that uh, carbon dioxide doesn't count as sudden, although it is pretty fast.